We're the world's largest crowdsourcing service for producing videos and graphics for brands. So a brand posts a brief on our site and we've got a creative community of 350,000 professionals around the world that create fantastic content for the brands. It's funny because a lot of our clients ask us not to make it too good. They want it to be authentic. They want it to be coming from real people. And I think one of the big changes going on in, in uh, content today is authenticity and not overproducing the work. We all know that TV ads online look artificial. They just don't sit well. And, and I would say vice versa too. But this idea of getting real people talking about brands that they use and why they like it, and in the case of crowdsourcing, having people with their friends, their family, their pets, their homes, just makes it all seem a lot more realistic. So one of the misconceptions is the quality of the work. Another misconception is that this work will not be controlled. People will take our brand and they're going to make fun of us or they're going to embarrass us and put it online. Well, everything we do is, is curated very carefully and we review all the content, but people can do that anyway. And so the people that do crowdsourcing are people that are in it because it's a competition. They're looking to create great work that's going to be used by the brand. They're not doing it because they're trying to embarrass anybody. They're doing it because they want the brand to use their work. And these are professionals. And one of the neat things about crowdsourcing is that it's a meritocracy. So the best work is selected by the brands for use. And the brands don't know who these people are. The agencies don't know who they are. They're picking it up because it really resonates with them. So some of the comments we get back is that the, the work has a lot of passion. And people select which projects they're going to work on because they might like a brand or they like a product or they believe in something and they want to get their point of, point of view across. Communities are a precious thing, and we've seen a number of companies come into our space and try to replicate our model, thinking that this is an easy thing to do. And what we've learned is that the community is the secret sauce that binds our people together. And it's based on trust. They trust that we have a great relationship with the brands, that the work is going to be appreciated, it's going to be used correctly, they're going to get paid for their efforts and that they're allowed to use this work for their own portfolios and for their own reels, which is a great advantage to them. Uh, the community is, it's a lot of fun because people are very engaged, very involved, very enthusiastic about working with the brands. We do webinars and so a brand manager or somebody from an agency will speak to our community and take questions and Q&A and I think as time goes on and we build out our platform, that interaction between storytellers and uh, creatives is going to become more and more prominent. But uh, our community is built up of not only filmmakers, but actors, music composers, graphic designers, uh, animators, and they come together. And it's wonderful to see the partnerships that develop around the world. We'll have a copy, copywriter in one country working with a filmmaker in another country. Um, actors will come together. And so that idea of collaboration within our community is something we're building out uh, more and more. You know, I think they love the fact that so many creative minds are looking at their brand and interpreting their brand and thinking about it. And when you get back 150 videos from very talented filmmakers, you're going to get an incredible amount of insight. So yes, there's a, there's a great ROI on the creative cost with crowdsourcing. Our videos, depending how many are used out of one brief, it might be anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000 per video. So it's a very cost-effective way of producing work. But after we've worked with the client, they come back and say, the content was great, we loved using it, it's very cost-effective. But the insights that we're getting from all these people thinking about our brand are phenomenal. And there's so much diversity in the work. And diversity is something that, as the United States changes demographically, is very important for brands. And so with crowdsourcing, you're getting all different types of people producing content with different interpretations. And we love to show examples. We'll show a very tight brief, and I used to think with these tight briefs, everything's going to look the same. But the tighter the brief, the more distinct the, con the content is. And it's really, it's really interesting to see how, if you say, well, we want a mother and daughter making lunch using Pillsbury roll-ups, how many different interpretations that can take and that's exactly what marketers need. So we're getting away from just having one 30 second spot that's good for everything. We're having hundreds of videos which can be used for all different audiences. And thanks to technology and distribution deployment, it's easier to get the right messages to the right people. I think what's so exciting is that 
advertising is becoming a two-way process and people are getting involved in the process. So I think the future of advertising is people talking about why they like brands and getting involved with brands on a personal level. So it's no longer the ivory tower telling people what they need to hear, it's people talking about what they want to hear and sharing their views. So I think, I think the future of advertising is participation. And as technology allows that, um, I think people are going to have fun working with brands and I think advertising is going to become more enjoyable and so things like ad blockers won't be such a problem in the future because people, it won't be a force it down their throat, it'll be, hey, let's get in this together.